Hey, how it's going, guys? So in this video, we are going to, you know, add a new feature in our radiology AI project. So remember, we have been building a tool for a radiologist. So, you know, uh, in last couple of videos, we have we have worked on setting up our open source LLMs. You know, setting up the uh, you know, the tools for inferencing or using the large language models, the medical models. You know, so we have worked with something called Medgema, which is a Google model. And, you know, then we integrated a segmentation model. It, it's named uh, MedSAM. Okay, SAM segment anything model by Meta AI. And then we had MedSAM that helps you segment anything in your medical images. Uh, and we have also you know, performed keyword extractions, entity extractions, you know, from the AI output using keyword. So we have completely, you know, have built these tools that you see on my screen right now, uh, radiology AI agent, this interface, pretty nice and clean interface, you know, we, where you can upload an image or bunch of images, also DICOM images. So DICOM is the main format, you know, for medical images. Now, you can set your own questions. There's a default question. Describe what you see in this image and highlight any abnormalities. And you can also set your own questions. Uh, we have an image preview in the left hand side. In the it's a three uh, three column layout that you see. Image preview, and then we have analysis results AI output. It gives you extracted keywords. You can see some of the just for classifying topics or entities and these keywords are being used you know to i'll talk about something called research insights i will go there but ai output and this ai segmentation that basically segments you know your uh, thing you know segmentation is a, a key component of medical images where they where you want to segment some of the uh, anomalies or some findings some abnormalities and so on and so forth so you can just get the segmentation the region Segmentation is important because you can then use that segmented, uh, you know, bounding boxes or whatever to to perform a lot of other, you know, processes on top of it. So you can find insights like depth of, you can find the depth, you can find the height, the weight, uh, you know, the density, a lot of other things. You know, if you have the reference uh, reference image. So then we have performed segmentation here on the right hand side. You can download that. It will download the coordinates now. You can see the AI output. It, it tells you that this image shows a microscopic view of colon tissue. These are visible crypts glands within the mucosa. So these are on the mucosa, right? The overall appearance is unremarkable with no obvious signs of inflammation, masses, or other significant abnormalities. However, without clinical context, of course, because it will require more clinical context in order to do it, but it has possible considerations like inflammations, neoplastic changes, and infectious etiology. Now, it also gives us some keywords like inflammation, microscopic, tissue. This is completely based on keyword, guys, open source tag. We are not using any APIs here. So far, we haven't used any APIs here, you know, to just get this inference, this segmentation. Now, in this video, we have, you know, what we have done, we have added a new uh, feature called finding out research insights, you know, f uh, based on these extracted keywords. And of course, we are handling duplications and everything. But based on these keywords, it finds out some, you know, research insights, finding out some similar case studies that will help the radiologist or the healthcare practitioner or anyone who is the end user of such tools, you know, to find out, you know, something that will help them to make decisions, to read or understand some uh, complex or critical cases. So we are using PubMed for this. PubMed is a data repository. Uh, for medical literature, you know, so it has a uh, more than I think more than 30 million if I'm not wrong I have to see the number. Yeah, but that's what it is. So if you look at here it finds Multiple articles based on these keywords. You can see clonic inflammation microscopic view on PubMed You can also click on that it automatically takes you to PubMed and that particular Research if you want to understand because sometimes what happens is when you're working with rare cases or some complex or critical cases, you know, it's difficult to kind of uh, perform a diagnosis or something like that, right? So you have to invest some time to kind of find out, right, uh, if somebody else has uh, similar cases in past. So we have PMI, PMID. There's an ID for that particular, you know, tutorial uh, article or whatever. So for each keyword, we get some ID and we also handling some duplications based on uh, PMID. So let's say, 
for this keyword and for this keyword, if there's a, there's a common article, we only show it once, right? So those kind of duplications have been handled, you know, in this, and you can find out all these insights. So we added this uh, PubMed and how we have added it, we have added through Intrage. So Intrage, if you look at here, it says, so by the way, PubMed is managed by NCBI, right? PubMed Central, NCBI kind of uh, is the parent that manages it. So you can see it says, Intrage is NCBI's primary text search and retrieval system that integrates the literature and molecular databases at NCBI, including DNA, protein sequence, structure, genomes, and whatnot. So we have these 30 different molecular and literature, literature databases. What we are doing, guys, here, right? We are helping, you know, the clinicians or the end users or the radiologists to kind of use such completely open source based stack or tool that will help them make diagnose, diagnosis, you know, decisions, of course, that will empower them. So we have added it. One more thing we have added here is export PDF report. When you click on it, it downloads a PDF report and this will get evolved. This is just the beginning. You can see it says radiology AI report Okay, by AI anytime. Okay, And you can find out very simple. It has the analysis and it has the extracted keywords and it writes down just like this. Very sim simple thing. You can see we have footed here. It's generated using AI tools. It gives you the timestamp. Just how you get a report. See, the reason I have been building this tool is for healthcare, open healthcare, right? Anybody who can use this. Uh, and of course, you have to extend this, make it 10x better to kind of make it usable, right? No, it, it's not usable, but that's not the idea. The idea here is to empower all of the non-technical people who are probably not that AI savvy they can use such open tools, you know, to help them at their workplace, right? They become more efficient. Now you can see the research, similar research based on all these AI outputs. In the next video, and of course, when I'm talking it, let me upload a new video as well, like a, a not new video, let's upload a new image, uh, probably. And let's upload this, this particular thing, we upload it, right, we'll see. So I'll show you the code. Uh, now, let me just click on analyze because this takes a few seconds. You can see it's it's like it started working. Now, I'll go to code here. Now, in the code, this is how our project folder looks like, right? We have added a new file called fetch underscores research.py. And we have built our module here and then used this in our main app.py file as a module. You can see it's very modular in nature because app.py has all our backend APIs. Now, in Fetch, how we are using it, uh, Fetch Research, we are using a library called BioPython. So we are using BioPython. You can see it says collection of modules for dealing with biological data in Python. So we are using the BioPython project is an international association of developers of freely available Python tools for computational molecular biology. So that's what we are doing. Now we are using Intrage from BioPython. And then we have a couple of other things. We You can see if when you are working with NCBI, uh, settings you have to give your uh, email address so i have given my email address here i have a couple of functions let's say if you want to directly run this file then for that i have this function but this is the function that you should see right now this is the function you should focus line number 39 fetch research for keywords so you have keywords and you have maximum results per keyword so you would like to find out how many keywords like let's say in a given ai output ai report Right. So we have five by default. That could be maximum. And then all your keyword. The keywords come from AI output, the keyword output. Okay. So in what we have very documented guys, so you can easily figure it out what's happening. We have an empty list here, research data. And we have all our PM IDs, like the dictionary, the IDs, just to handle the duplicates. Uh, and then we are having a for loop, fetching the articles using the function called fetch PubMed articles, giving our query equal to keyword and giving maximum results. Filtering out the duplicates, as I said, using PMID, just setting it up as a dictionary, right? That's what we do and track that and just write it. So it's simple research data and then just use it guys here. So as a module and we use the same thing in our app.py. Everything is a very modular code. So DICOM is separate, entity is separate, fetch research is separate, like a MedSAM is separate elements. So all of these are like separate modules that we are using here, guys. So you can find it very uh, scal scalable and modular. So in our backend API, our backend API is runs here. 
let me and you can see how beautiful is this right if you look at let me first show you this output then you will understand image preview it gives you the automatically fetch that as well you can see it fetches breast lesion appears so it fetches some in, uh, research with lesion you can see melanoma right pleural effusion in young male with a history of resected cutaneous melanoma and you can find out a lot of similar things uh, breast hematoma fantastic right which is crazy for people who is very uh, you know uh, passionate about radiology here so you can see the ai segmentation also has been so good input image and bounding box and this is the mid same segmentation if you look at the output here by ai the mid gemma model it says the image shows a breast mri there is a suspicious lesion present with the within the right breast the lesion appears as a heterogeneous area with increased signal intensity on t2 weighted images suggested edema or fluid further evaluation is needed to determine if it's benign or malignant differential diagnosis so it gives you differential not the diagnosis so it can have these all of these things idc lcis cystic changes fibroadenoma other malignancies or whatever next steps may include repeat mri with contrast enhancement to assess vascularity you know which probably something has to do with nerves i believe vascular means the nerves something mammogram or ultrasound for further characterization biopsy of the lesion if indicated for finding out if it's benign or malignant so it gives you these two keywords and then it finds out all of your research which is fantastic right you can see it over here so and we have our segmentation here you can download it you can download the reports and whatnot so this is how you know it works now our backend apis right it works on localhost 8000 right so if i go to 8000 if I go to docs, you can find out radiology AI assistant API. You know, this API provides tools for radiologists to analyze medical images using AI. It accepts DICOM files, converts them to JPEG, and analyzes them using a specialized radiology LLM because MedGemma has been trained on histopathological pathology and radiological images. And you can find out very well documented backend APIs you can see research insight has its own API analysis with has its own APIs image segmentation has its own APIs very modular uh, you know in that sense so we have built this right uh, similarly on the front end side backend I have shown you just using here uh, you know in the uh, in the APIs now you know that's what that's what we are doing uh, pretty st standard you can see segmentation is happening then direct segmentation you can just go research insight is happening here you can see how the research insight is happening right so this is what it is now on the front end also we have a front end folder in the front end we have a lot of components if i go to src in the components we have this research insights and in the research insights we saw you know how do we have to show it you can see we are using axios of it to kind of use the backend data if it, it hits this research insights endpoint and basically fetches you uh, this information and we have a little bit of ui ux stuff going on like searching pubmed blah 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 okay so that's what it is guys this is how we built it in the next video what we're gonna do is we already have report we have download we have now insights in next video we're gonna go one step further and contextualizing this information and any supporting supported document let's say these are only a single image right coming from medical devices like mri ct and what let's say if you have your previous reports right how how can you upload this here that will basically gives a model extra contextual information you know extra information to make this decision better so probably we'll move towards that direction you know and we'll in in our future direction we can also look at finding out risks you know risk uh, using machine learning models uh, that will be a better you know a bit more you know explainable when it comes to these kind of healthcare settings so we're going to look at that but yeah that's the that's the future video so we have this backend api our user interface is working very minimal user interface we're going to of course make this a bit better probably will bring ai segmentation here just below this image so image being one area and we can bring research insight here on the right hand side and then below we're going to have some other features coming up predictions and a chatbot kind of stuff we can have a chatbot right an integrated chatbot so that will be there so that's all guys you know for this video i wanted to show you step by step that we are you know extending this into a full-fledged big project an open project for radiologists right uh you know anyone who is probably 
working in this field when hospitals any r and d and stuff right so that's what it is if you have any question thoughts feedbacks let me know in the comment box you can also reach out to me through my social media channels find those information on channel banner and channel about us if you like the video please hit the like icon if you haven't subscribed the channel yet guys please do subscribe the channel that helps me you know to be a bit more motivated uh you know we have of course reached from 0 to 40000 plus of course we'll reach 100k uh, for sure but yeah just keep supporting guys uh, and let me know if you need anything reach out to me through my social media channels find those information on channel banner and channel about us that's all for this video thank you so much for watching see you in the next one